All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living What's up, everybody? Good morning. Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Clint Davis, your host. Thank you for joining us. On the Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast, you know what we do. We read the Bible. We discuss it. And today we are in 1 Samuel chapter 29, nearing the end of the book of 1 Samuel, as we've been reading through it. We'll jump into 2 Samuel, continue the story of King David as uh, we keep going. But here we go, verse 1 of chapter 29 of 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines had gathered all their forces at Aphek, and the Israelites were encamped by the spring that is in Jezreel. As the lords of the Philistines were passing on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men were passing on in the rear, with Achish, the commanders of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the commanders of the Philistines, Is this not David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, who has been with me now for days and years and since he deserted to me? I have found no fault in him to this day. And the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him, and the commanders of the Philistines said to him, Send the man back that he may return to the place to which you have assigned him. He shall not go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become an adversary to us. For how could this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Would it not be with the heads of the men here? Is this is not this David of whom they sing and to one another in dances? Saul has struck down his thousands, David his ten thousands. Then Achish called David and said to him, As the Lord lives, you have been honest, and it's, to me it seems right that you should march out with me in this comp- campaign. For I have found nothing wrong in you from the day of your coming to this day. Nevertheless, the lords do not approve of you. So go back now and go peaceably that you may not displease the lords of the Philistines. And David said to Achish, But what have I done? What have you found in your servant from the day I entered your service until now, that I may not go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? And Achish answered David and said, I know that you are blameless in my sight as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the commanders of the Philistines have said, He shall not go up with us to battle. Now then rise early in the morning with the servants of your lord who came with you, and start early in the morning and depart as soon as you have light. So David set out with his men early in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. But the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Now, listen, the Philistines are out at battle. They're going to battle against the Israelites. Uh, It is in this battle that Saul and Jonathan will both lose their lives. Uh, That will come later in next chapter. But this is a battle that uh, the Philistines and the Israelites have. David will eventually be the conqueror of the Philistines, but Saul is incapable of conquering the Philistines. The Philistines are the great enemy of God's people during this time period. The interesting thing about this um, passage or this chapter as I read it is really kind of threefold to me. Number one, uh, the commanders of the Philistines said, why is David going to battle with us? King Achish, you are crazy for taking David, the king of the Israelites, the servant of Saul, the next in line to be the king, to battle with you. I mean, why would you do that? You have allowed a traitor into our midst. It tells me right now that they're probably not happy that David was there, that David was uh, living and dwelling in Philistia and had close access to the king. But now you're going to take him into battle. And their reasoning was simple, right? He wants to kill us. He's going to turn on us. He's going to kill us. He's going to come in and and show our heads uh, to his lords, King Saul. And that's how they're going to be reconciled together through this battle. This is a ploy that David is using in order to get back in the good graces of King Saul. Hey, listen, that makes good sense. You know it does, and I know it does, right? These guys are thinking with good wisdom. The second thing that's interesting here is that when they bring that concern to, to King Achish, King Achish says, you know what? Okay, I get you. I hear your complaint. Now, whether he agrees with them or not, and it seems that he does it because he says, well, David's done nothing to find that, that caused me to not find, to find fault in him. Uh, but, you know, okay, since you guys don't want him going to battle, I'll send him back. And so King Achish listens to his commanders, and he goes to David, and he says, David, I want you to go back. I want you to get all your people together, and I want you to go back to to the land of Philistia. Don't go to battle with us, and I want you to go back. And so that's what happens. But the third thing that's very interesting to me is that David seems to 
not understand, right? David's like, well, I want to go to battle with you. Now, David is a man after God's own heart. Now, what is David's intention? Well, it seems to me David's intention is to go out to battle. David has already promised King Achish that he'll be loyal. It seems to me David wants to go out to battle. Maybe David thinks in his mind, this is the time the Lord's anointed Saul will be killed. Maybe David thinks this is my opportunity, right, to avenge myself to King Saul and kill him and then take on leadership and reign over my people. I don't know what David's thinking. We're not told what David's thinking. But David here, for some reason, doesn't understand that what is really happening is God is protecting him from going out to battle against his own people. How are you going to be king of people one day when you kill a bunch of them? Right? That's the question. Like if you, How are you going to go out and go kill a bunch of people or kill a bunch of Israelites or go to war against the Israelites and then come back in and be like, I'm king. Y'all listen to me. God's not going to allow that to happen. And so as we see throughout the Bible, God saves us from ourselves. He saves David from himself here. And so he says, David, listen, you, you, you know, in, in, in the circumstances, God says to David, you need to go back and don't go to this battle. Now, God doesn't audibly say that to him, but God says that through the circumstances. And King Achish, to his credit, says, no, David, I want you to return. God often works that way. We see circumstances in our lives, and we are like, what in the world's going on? We don't listen. We don't like them. But in reality, oftentimes, God is actually saving us from some kind of decision or some kind of action that could harm us later and affect his will and his plan in our lives. We've got to learn to trust him and allow him to work. And so I think this is a tremendous story. Uh, it makes the, the, the leaders of Philistia they were very wise. Uh, King Achish, smart as a leader, listens to his generals. Okay, fine. I, I can do without David. David, s slow to remember, slow to acknowledge it. Doesn't really understand it. Actually, he's probably kind of angry about it. But you got to go back, David, because King Achish has the, the guts to stand firm, sends David back, and all the while, God is protecting and preserving David from doing something incredibly harmful to his future. God works that way. Be those kind of people. <clears throat> be people who are wise. Be people who listen. Be people who are standing firm on the truth. Make the right decisions. And also trust the Lord uh, that sometimes things don't go our way, but maybe God is protecting us and preserving us from doing something that's going to harm his purposes for us later. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. You carry me close to your heart.